You are listening to the Practicing the Art of Small Business podcast with Shannon Merlot and Julie Parker. Join their conversations about business, leadership, and self-awareness journey to greater success. Welcome, Shannon, to this week's episode of Practicing the Art of Small Business. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you, Julie. Fantastic. I was, for our, for our listeners, I was just saying to Julie, I wasn't expecting that today would be a recording because we were going to talk about marketing, but as it turns out, marketing for the podcast, but as it turns out, podcast episode. <laughs> I like putting you under the pump, that's for sure. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love where this collaboration goes and it, it just flows <laughs> where it needs to. It does. And so we were going to just talk about marketing the podcast without recording it. But what we often do find with our conversations that we think that was gold for the podcast. Why didn't we record it? And it's going to be the an elegant, well thought out marketing strategy. And you would all be facing this as small business owners out there. Like how much time and energy money do I spend on that? And creative juices as well, which is the harder part of the whole thing, I feel. Versus let's just get shit done. And I use mm. the word shit because it has a higher impact. And so I hope that <laughs> I haven't heard of anybody. <laughs> and for all the listeners out there, Shannon is much more into details and structure. And Julie's a little bit more, let's just get it out there and do it. Come on, let's launch. <laughs> no, we need a process. Oh, damn it. <laughs> And so, and so we're hoping that this conversation is going to be, or we trust more than hope, I guess, is that there'll be a really nice balance between the practicalities of being a small business owner who just has to get shit done. How many times can we say shit in this podcast, Julie? Let's just I count think, it I out as we, we go. say the word shit quite often, I think. That's cool. <laughs> this is weeding out the herd of people who aren't going to be all that interested and intrigued by us as <laughs> podcast <laughs> We'll have to offend. This might be the one they go, okay, that's it. I'm over and done with that. Those, girls, <laughs> those, potty, those potty mouth girls. Those potty, those potty mouth girls. Those, um, so that, that, that balancing between the get shit done and a little bit more strategic thought behind it. And, and I don't know about you, Julie, but often when I start working with someone, there is that conflict or that friction between, oh, I need to do social media and Shannon more often than not coming in going, can we just take a step back and decide whether there's it's worthwhile doing social media? So we're going to talk about the navigation between strategy and spending some time thinking about it from a strategic and, and process perspective and the doing bit. Nice. And that balance is also true that it, it – it, it, you want structure there, but not so much structure that it puts a barrier up to the natural organic flow of the universe <laughs> <laughs> that presents itself with opportunity, presents us opportunities that we can only see when we're not so rigid in our thought process as well. So there is a nice balance there. Mm, mm. So in terms of our podcast, Julie, we, we were going to hook up today and just talk about, well, how do we promote it? And, and then our earlier conversation started with, actually, we probably want to put a bit of a website. And then, of course, Shannon's thinking, content, blogs, we're going to need a long, we get, you know, so <laughs> we had to pull that back a little bit. But it was, it was about, okay, how do we promote it? And Julie and I have our independent socials and um, I was sort of looking at how do I integrate that into my independent socials? But then it does ask the question of should we or could we or why should we have any more strategic thought than just we're doing a podcast? Episode one is about this and finding that balance. Mm. This is all making me recall a experience I had, an experience I had, Myers-Briggs personality profiling, and I mentioned uh, before, but not during the recording of this podcast, that whatever system you choose, it has to also align with the way you naturally like to work as well as a business owner. So this experience that I had, it was a group of us that were there doing these um, personality profiling. It was a management course of some kind. And I was 
between two groups, I, the, the, my answers were indicating that I was on the cusp there, could go either way. And I said, I'm not quite sure which group I belong to for this, this experiment, this exercise. And the woman said, well, let's start with this group. You will know very quickly <laughs> whether you're supposed to be in this group or not. And so I said, okay. So the exercise was plan a trip to the zoo. So I get with all of these and it, it was um, – I think there were only about two men there, but majority women there. So the, the people we, within my group were all women. Not that it makes any difference to anything at all. I just want to paint your picture. And they said, okay, let's. Visual thinker. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> and I also like to take over conversations. And so when they said, okay, go, I said, okay, let's. <laughs> You're all eyes on Julie now. <laughs> this is how we're going to do it. Let's pick a Sunday that's during the day that no one's got anything planned, we're not working, no school, all the rest of it. Let's pick a Sunday, I don't know, maybe just after lunch. Then we don't even have to worry about lunch. Like 1 o'clock, we'll meet at that big statue inside the Melbourne Zoo. Done. Okay. <laughs> we're in the zoo. <laughs> and Julie's like, and when the, the zoo trip's been done. <laughs> that's right. And all the other people in the group are going, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> How are we going to get there? Yeah, were they bookkeepers, accountants, lawyers, engineers? Uh, they were all in the dental field. <laughs> mm. But they wanted to work out how we're all going to get there. Were we going to carpool? Let's go for lunch anyway. We'll all bring a plate and we'll make sure that we all share information about allergies that children may have so all the plates <laughs> that are brought don't conflict with anyone's allergies and then we're going to who's going to bring the umbrellas in case it rains and the this and the that and I was sitting there going oh my god I'm in the other group Julie I mean I'm in the other group I'm in the other group I thought you may have been in that group no some of our conversations go and so the woman came over to me and she said you look uncomfortable (laughs) and I said I am and she said, I think you belong in the other group. Go over to the other group. So I went over to the other group. They're all just sitting there silent. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is this group? They're just sitting around doing nothing. And I said, um, have you made a plan? And they said, yeah, we think we just kind of go on a Sunday afternoon in a couple of weeks' time. And that's the plan. <laughs> like, woo, we're the right group. <laughs> and this, that is, that's a nice analogy, I think, for a, an elegant, sophisticated marketing plan and just getting shit done both achieve the goal would you agree both achieve the goal of going to the zoo as a group yes the experience of everybody at the zoo may be different (laughs) (laughs) and and the, the the amount of preparation and thought to the process and energy, you know, positive energy when you've got a lot of focused minds trying to figure out how to make this event a really successful one, happy one for all, that would be better achieved with a plan. But you still achieve the goal of the plan when you're just wanting to get shit done. And the benefit of getting stuff done is that you'll get it done quicker and you'll have a sense of progress, which I think in itself is motivating you start getting results quicker as well like with my let's just get shit done plan we may have a conversation a week going no one subscribed not one person has listened or downloaded one of our episodes i'm like oh maybe the plan needs a bit more sophistication (laughs) (laughs) and so we get results quicker so we can then try different things as well (laughs) and this is this is the beauty of collaboration and i think it's a really amazing analogy that you've used because there is beauty in the detail and I completely agree that I'm 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 actually I'm halfway between one and the other because I'm like yeah cool Sunday at the zoo great how am I going to get there Julie we live close to each other do you want to come go together we'll meet at 11 do you want to do lunch beforehand yeah great good so we've you know, we've been fed and we're, we get to the zoo at two o'clock, but then everyone else trying to couple together and coordinate. I was like, no, but the broader question is: Is it important that the group feels collectively joyful on the day? Do we want everyone to feel included in what's happening on the day? 
So do we need to have more meat on the just turn up and sort yourself out or do we want people to feel included? Do we want people to have, um, do, do we want to ensure that we have a really good time there? We do want people to be fed. So we do want to have some sort of at least acknowledgement that by the time we meet, we've eaten. And so whoever wants to meet here and eat, do that. Julie and I, we're going to go have a glass of wine and some <laughs> a, a salad beforehand. We don't really want to join the group. We might look at the animals. We might not. We might be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do think that this is a really great analogy around the thinking about the outcome, but then also what do we want to experience as a result of the outcome? Because we can get to the outcome of getting to the zoo, but if we want people to feel included, have a full belly and to look after the people who are going via public transport, then we want to put a little bit more meat on the bones. And so marketing is a little bit like that. So by the end of this conversation, our outcome, Julie, will be that we will have enough meat on the bones that I will feel personally comfortable and we've added value to our podcast listeners. But we've also got our quick and dirty um, but satisfying. <laughs> I did, she said the quick and dirty before we started recording and I said, you really understand I'm just thinking about sex now. So she wanted to clarify. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's always quick but dirty. <laughs> so tell us about the meat on the bones for your marketing strategy. Okay. So... Here are the things that we already know. So marketing strategy is has a few components in it. Um, one of the things that we want to think about is what, what is our point of difference to our competitors? Mm -hmm. Now, is that important for you and I right now? Actually not, because you and I have decided to do this podcast as a fun project. We enjoy each other's company. We learn from this process and we just trust that as we put it out there, those who enjoy it are going to enjoy it. There's not really any skin off our noses other than our time. And actually we get such inherent benefit from having these conversations that it doesn't matter. However, if we were looking to seriously make money if this was our only product and we were seriously looking to make money from this podcast I would be saying Julie the quick and dirty is not enough here we've got to spend a bit of time looking at what are our competitors doing what is our point of difference how are we going to market this podcast to position ourselves appropriately to attract our audience mm. so I like that I didn't yeah that's nice I like it I like thank it. you thank you so that's number one in terms of marketing strategy. So we've kind of covered that off. We don't need it here. Number two would be looking at who our ideal client is and making sure that we're marketing in a way that our ideal client listens and then takes action to listen to the podcast. Now, you and I are very clear on who our ideal client is. We work with small business owners. Your ideal client is niched in the dental industry. Mine are small business owners more generally. To be fair, I often work with the people who are who are planning out to the nth degree, <laughs> the the lunch and the public transport and the, the allergies thing and, and the this and the that and yeah. everything. As it turns out, I, I work with detail people. So I'm I'm actually the one who's going, isn't Sunday just enough? <laughs> <laughs> But more to the point, we've got a pretty good idea of, of that. We want people who listen to this and love the contrast of this conversation, the difference of our the difference of our points of difference. And we want people who are inspired to learn constantly on their journey. Does that change our marketing strategy? Not so much, not really our messaging, other than that positivity of that this is what the podcast stands for. Mm. So it's probably a content pillar for getting yeah. into the detail. Yeah, and I think that one of the things that I thought of as you were explaining that was what I wouldn't like to do, sometimes creating the plan is understanding what you don't want to do. What I wouldn't like to do is step into that marketing promotional worthy path, but I don't necessarily want to do that with this, of, okay, once someone becomes a subscriber, 
then you get their email address, then you blog to them and you promote to them and, you know, they get emails three times a week and they go into the process. So I would like it to be a bit more organic in terms of not have that rigidity, not have that huge process because, as you say, this is not a money-making thing for us so we can afford to be more relaxed about it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's our relaxed nature around this that we're hoping is appealing to people as well. Mm -hmm. But to have it... I think if it was too rigid, possibly we are imposing ourselves onto everybody rather than hopefully they will be participating in the, in a way of these are the sort of topics that are interesting to us and that one was great because of this, this and this. And so we react to the market as they jump on board in their droves and become subscribers for life <laughs> and that we become more responsive to our market and we are more open to receiving those messages from our market. Mm. Another marketing concept, mm -hmm. customer journey. What you're talking about there is actually what does our customer journey look like for our podcast listeners? And just because I like talking a little bit of jargon. <laughs> jargon <laughs> away, baby. Jargon away. We've got a customer journey and we've got a funnel. So our marketing funnel. So really right at the moment, we're talking about how do we fill our awareness part of the marketing funnel? So how do we tell people that, that we've got this podcast and we'll get to that people for those who are on the edge of their seat on how are we, <laughs> how are we getting to the zoo? This is how <laughs> we're, we'll get, we'll get to that. Where Julie was talking about is going further down the funnel. How do we nurture the people who go, oh, that's interesting, listen to a podcast recording, and then how do we nurture them into taking another step? Now, I don't think I agree with you, Julie. I don't think we need, and I say need specifically, need to fill that part of the funnel because our desire is that this is for both of us a marketing tactic for our independent businesses and the idea is that if someone resonates with either of us and they're looking for support in their business, then they will go to our business pages. That would be inspired-outcomes.com. And what's your website? Uh, Julie Parker, Practice Success. Thanks for paying attention, Shannon. <laughs> I was like, I know it's a, there's a Julie Parker, there's a practice, there's a something in there. Is it .com.au? Both. Okay. Both <laughs> to the same place. <laughs> so, and and from that or from, or from our social pages, we have our own customer journeys. So we don't necessarily need to nurture you, dear listener, into our funnels because Julie and I don't currently have a co-joined practice Ooh, hang We're on. not co-joined or conjoined. <laughs> <laughs> it's not messy at all. Not messy at all. But and so, we, so the podcast is a means to an end rather than the end itself. It's not the product. It's not the service. It's uh, in support of our own individual uh, endeavours. Well, it, it's actually one of our marketing tactics for our own businesses. Nice, nice. So, so now we're going in back into the zoo on how we're getting to the zoo. How do we market the podcast to just get awareness? And um, with marketing, we would talk about ideal clients. So we talked about that. Uh, we would talk about what are our key messages. And I think the key messages about this podcast is that it's fun it's contrasting. We're both business owners. We work with business owners. We're educating around what's important for small business owners. It needs to be easy to consume, get a return on your time investment, something that you can take away. There are our key messages. Done. Yeah. yeah. And then and then the next part of marketing is like, where, like, oh my goodness. We can't use like or basically. We're, we are Toastmasters. <laughs> I was about to, we're swearing, talking about sex, and I'm saying like. What has happened to this podcast, we're Julie? back in age. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, like, we're basically like this. <laughs> we're basically, like, just amazing. <laughs> um. For the record, Julie and I haven't sat. Well, I haven't started drinking yet. Maybe that's the problem. Well, what is it? One thirty-five. Is I've been drinking for a good half hour. By now. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. 
The final part of the marketing plan, and this is the quick and dirty plan, yet satisfying, (laughs) is where do we need to say these key messages to build the awareness part of the funnel? And so you and I have our own social pages and it's a case of going, okay, so Julie, I'm going to post on LinkedIn Mm. and probably Facebook and Instagram. And the key messages are I'm doing a podcast with Julie. It's interactive and fun and good contrast. If you're on Facebook, you're my friend, so do me a favour and listen to it. Listen to it and <laughs> Can subscribe. I yeah, subscribe. And to go where, and this is for everyone out there, obviously, obviously. go where your market resides where they look. And so one of the things that we could be doing is joining as many uh, small business groups on Facebook and LinkedIn as we can. And that's where we're doing a lot of our posting because that's where our market is. That's where they're engaging. Yeah. 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 And actually I'm part of a networking group and there is, they have a group which is about member events. So I would absolutely post it in that and say, got this cool podcast get involved it's fun and interactive and there's a good return on your time investment so I would absolutely be suggesting yes look where where do definitely where do our ideal clients of business owners hang out now the good thing is that your and my marketing we're already interacting on the the areas where people are our, our ideal client is hanging out and where they're consuming information. So it is actually about leveraging our own current marketing platforms. And in fact, I'm probably going to add us to my EDM, Julie. I will be too, certainly as well. Okay. And it makes perfect sense because they are our market as well. They've either worked with us in the past or they're working, they hopefully they'll work with us in the future, but they're certainly within that market net that we've got for ourselves and so that makes perfect sense and it's useful information as well I always like with my market I always like to send out free information that's of high value and only ask for a sale have those have have those uh, messages going out maybe 25 percent of the time so people don't feel harassed to be spending money all the time and so I think the the podcast being of around half an hour is a very listenable thing to do in your lunch break or on the drive to or from work and getting those alerts via email so it's right in front of people that they can go, oh, yep, I might listen to that later on today. I think that would be an effective use of our emailing time as well. Just going back to our marketing plan, we've pretty much done it. We're not trying to promote this to sell. This is actually one of our marketing tactics for our business. We already know who our ideal client is because we decided to do the podcast because it served the needs for our ideal client. Where do we need to say it? In the channels that we're already saying it in through our businesses. And wonderfully cheap to do so as well. Correct. And we've got our key messages. Do we need to do our competitor analysis? Not really. Not for the podcast. And we've probably already done it for our businesses anyway so we're probably pretty clear on that and is competitor the right term as well because for example to you know go back to space i know if it's a de- if it's dentistry i'm going to get my filling done from this dentist or this dentist and so as a dental practice you're thinking well you're my competitor because either i get to do the filling or you get to do the filling but with podcast listeners it's not they listen to us or somebody else they listen to us as well as everybody else Yes and no. So just in terms of what marketing is, I could go to a dentist and get a filling and I could go to another dentist and get whitening. Mm -hmm. But what I really want to do is go to the same dentist for all my dental needs. And I would go to that one dentist because they fulfill a variety of my core needs and my values. And that's why I would go back to them. So in terms of looking at competitors, yes, but yes, there's lots of people with podcasts, but 
what would be the value of someone listening to our podcast as compared to mm-hmm. if, if they've only got half an hour and they've got five different podcasts, why would they want to listen to ours? You're absolutely and I right. Think- There's only so many hours in the day that you get or moments in the day that you get to listen to something. Correct. Sure. Yeah. And of course, this podcast and our dulcet tones are the <laughs> absolute reason why people would what want to. What are you to- talking about, Shannon? <laughs> I don't know, Julie. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, and so I guess there is a point of, of being clear about, well, what what is our point of difference? And I think we've, we've got it in terms of that this is not a stuffy podcast. It's designed to be informative. It's designed to be fun. I know that when I listen over our podcast, I don't know whether I find us just completely amusing <laughs> and our audience is not. But I always listen into our recordings and go, oh, my God, this is really fun this is fun. This is funny. I want people to be listening to this in their car, kind of giggling away. So I think that there is a point to always kind of look, okay, well, why, what is the value of someone consuming me? And when I say that, not me, me in business, there is that competitor, like why would someone buy from me as compared to a competitor? But also while I'm scrolling Facebook, why would I stop and look at your post ahead of someone else's post? So it's actually about making sure that whatever we're putting out there in the ether is actually worthwhile for people who are our target market to stop and to consume and to spend time and energy being part of. It's very esoterical. Mm, mm, That's right. But that's, you know, it is about if you could picture a, long hallway with many rooms, doors to many rooms. You know, we want the people to be wandering up and down those hallways and going, mm, that room looks like it's more engaging or a bit more fun or maybe more informative or that it would be more satisfying to be in that room. Well, I like our strategy. It's, it's, and, you know, I mentioned before, you need to de- develop a marketing strategy that works with the way you work as a human being. And because I do like to get stuff done, this allows that to happen and it's got some more thought behind it from the intelligent Shannon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the detail that I need to fill in now is what am I going to write on my socials about our podcast? And I think what I'm going to do, we talked about those pillars. It's fun. It's interactive. Uh, it's, we trust it's enjoyable. It's for small business owners. It's about our value in the marketplace, which is that we are small business owners. We work with small business owners. We talk about the challenges of Mm. life and brain and personal development and mindset. And then episode number one, this is what we're talking about. And I think that's what my posts are going to be, Julie. And that's probably will be resonated in my EDM. And for those who don't know what an EDM is, that's an electronic digital mail. It's like the newsletters that you used to get faxed through and prior to that was in a letter. <laughs> Julie and I are both old enough. <laughs> Handwritten How letter. Email in your inbox. Correct. Correct. And I think that's it. Done. Good. Well, everyone out there will be, I'm sure, searching their LinkedIn and Facebook feeds, waiting for our ads to come up so they can sit back and assess what did they end up coming up with? (laughs) Do I think that works or not? Maybe we need a Facebook page so people can leave feedback. That was a terrible EDM. That was a terrible Facebook ad post. (laughs) Well, in saying that, Julie, you have just raised the point that we probably should as part of our plan for the podcast is to have a Facebook page page or group we were talking about that at some stage where we we wanted interaction and I think planning because for the Facebook page we need to have people joining the page and interacting on the page to make the page worthwhile yeah Mm. Mm. and I think at the start we're like oh people may dribble in as subscribers they may not be all that active but let's just create the space let's build the field of dreams and they will come (laughs) And let's create the Facebook page and assume it will be well populated with both members and contributors mm. on that page. I'm going to put that on our post zoo visit. That then goes against the quick and dirty in my mind because then we've got a mm. we've got a 
market it and that then becomes separate to these yeah. posts. So I think that the way, so, so I think that the way that is going to work best for current timelines, the quick and dirty version is maintain it separately on it, our individual ones as we get the website in place, perhaps next year, we then focus in on the strategy of the our podcast being a brand into into of itself in, in of, itself, of itself in of itself in, in of itself. Yes, but the quick and dirty version is let's not worry in about that right now. Self in and of itself in and of itself. Bit of English there as well, everyone. You learn so many things on this podcast. <laughs> Kind of be the right things, but thing. <laughs> Both in and of itself. Yeah. Great. I'm happy with that one. <laughs> so marketing plan done. Done and dusted. Easy. Shannon. What? I look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.